Hello and welcome to, or welcome back to the Ms. Artastic podcast, my lovely friend. Today we're going to go on something that might be, well, a little bit um, different, a little bit different, but it has to be said. So in this episode, I'm going to be focusing and talking um, a bit about why having a picture perfect, picture perfect, classroom does not make you a better teacher and the reason why we're diving in on this topic is because often we scroll on social media and there are some serious and a lot of insta worthy beautiful amazing classrooms and my friend they are honestly they are i agree truly beautiful truly amazing picture perfect completely incredible classrooms out there however depending on where you're at in your career you could be at the beginning or starting phase or in the messy middle or or maybe you're established no matter what we're all at different places and in literally in our lives um in our careers and everything and often sometimes when we look at social media we start playing um the comparison game and we really lose focus of what matters so i know that if um you're listening to this you're like what i can't what about this picture perfect classroom i i have one um how dare you say that please listen um this probably is not for you this is a very focused podcast or um youtube vlog episode so stay tuned and i'm gonna dive in on my reasons for why i'm saying why having a picture perfect classroom does absolutely does not make you a better a better teacher so let's dive into it you're listening to the miss artastic podcast inspiration for art teachers here's your host kathleen mcgivern so again, we're talking about why having a picture perfect classroom does not make you a better teacher. And you might see when you scroll through social media a lot of picture perfect classrooms. But this does not make you a better teacher. While this is of course absolutely gorgeous, they are stunning, they are serious classroom goals. Um, and they fill in those uh, ha- classroom goals, hashtag classroom goals checkbox. Um, it is not going to make you a better teacher by having this. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to explain now in depth why I am saying this and what will, in fact, making you a better teacher if that is your goal and focus. Okay. So if you're looking for self-development, self-improvement, um, those kinds of things. If you're looking to learn new strategies and become a better teacher, um, of course, we always, all of us are always looking to become better. But that, if you have a focus of the year in terms of growth, um, this is not the thing to focus on and there are things to focus on. So um, let's dive in on that okay so why having an insta worthy picture perfect classroom doesn't make you a better teacher so i know that right now there are absolutely two reactions to this statement one of rejoice and celebration and one of pure anger at me i get it okay (laughs) please do not yell at me um I appreciate you and I appreciate the amazing things and opportunity and beautiful classroom that you are providing for your students. And I understand your why. It's, um, I understand that it, it, it makes you happy. I understand it makes your students happy. And I am not saying not to do those things, okay? I am not saying that you should definitely not do this. It's setting up a too high of standard or unrealistic expectation. No, I do not think that at all. Okay. Um, however, I think that if you're in the other place, if you're the person who's feeling the pressure to do this, but instead have, should have a focus somewhere else, then don't be distracted by this. That is what I'm saying. Okay. So again, please don't yell at me. I, uh, 100%, I 100% 
think that there are absolutely amazing, beautiful classrooms out there and anyone winning a full classroom makeover is 100% deserving of it. Okay, I agree. They look stunning. They probably make you feel good. I'm sure the students so very much appreciate it um, and love it. It does take your classroom out of that institutionalized feel it makes it feel safe and more like a family home probably better than a lot of, a lot of um, family rooms <laughs> some of them are stunning however this insta worthy social media attention getting classroom will not make you a better teacher it is nice to have absolutely is it reasonable or accessible for everyone? Absolutely not for so many different reasons. Should you do it if you want to, 100% go for it. Absolutely. Because of course you can spend your money um, and resources and time on whatever you want or choose to do in this life. And you should definitely do you. All right why this is not reasonable for everyone. So before I explain what will actually make you a better teacher, it is important to know that this social media pressure for having an absolutely stunning classroom is not reasonable for everybody. As well, it is not normal, it is not the norm. It is, I guess it is normal to have a beautiful classroom. That is everybody's goal. Um, however, um, there is a different level that exceeds it beyond is beyond dreams and that is typical not typical in every single classroom in every single school um it is popular especially on social media and we see a lot of those images of course algorithms are pushing images we like or we're following somebody who has it so we're often used to seeing a lot of that but that's not when you go to just typical schools you're not seeing every single classroom like that just uh to be clear um so it, it skews reality but Social media does that for absolutely everything, of course, right? Uh, we're not seeing the whole, we're not seeing everything, right? We're not seeing when that class, those classrooms are <laughs> um, freshly used by students. As we know, our classroom at the start of the day looks very different from the end of the day. Um, as well, what we're not seeing where this person is and what point of their career they are, right? Uh, it might be achievable for someone mid-career who's been it's not their first year or not even their second year um because they had you know they have maybe more opportunity to focus on developing their classroom or maybe they're in mid-career they've been developing this beautiful insta-worthy classroom over years of refinement over years it doesn't happen overnight uh, that would be very incredible. I'm, and it does happen. You know, there's makeovers out there that make these things happen. Those are amazing opportunities for teachers. Um, but um, we cannot compare ourselves to an that either because that was uh, a team of professionals. <laughs> so that is why it's uh, unreal unrealistic sometimes for individuals. Now, are there people doing it? Absolutely. Are they sending again? Yes. Should they do it if they love it to do it? Absolutely. Um, I'm just saying if you have other focuses again, then maybe this is not the thing you should focus on at the moment. <laughs> if you have other places, you should be spending your focus. Okay. So um, again, I know I might be ruffling fe feathers and I do apologize, but please know um, that if you have your a beautiful classroom, one of those stunning Insta-worthy ones, I absolutely do love it and I think it is amazing. I am most likely one of those people who is liking your pictures, um, but for but this post is not for you, right? I am not putting down these classrooms. Um, that is not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm going to write that into this blog post before I get angry people. <laughs> I am not, I'm going to repeat that, I am not here uh, to put anybody down or say not to do it. So what I am saying is that this post is for, and this, this information, what I'm saying right now to you on this podcast, on this YouTube vlog, if you're reading the blog uh, at the same time, this is really for any teacher who is feeling pressured to achieve this because 
they might think that it's going to make them the better teacher, okay? If, for anybody who thinks that this is a strategy to be the better teacher, this is not a strategy. This is not going to make you a better teacher. Teachers develop their classroom and create resources and collect over time. Not for their very first year of teaching on day one, although it is not impossible. And I'm not saying don't decorate your classroom and don't organize it and don't put up labels. I'm talking the those extremely um, intricately decorated classrooms. That is something that is developed over time. When you are a new teacher, you are most likely at the bottom of a salary scale and you are trading your time four dollars you will not have time during the day to make this transformation because you're teaching (laughs) you are teaching (laughs) it will be happening on your own time along with all the lesson planning and marking and assessment and all the creation of your hooks all your other lesson stuff will be on top of this um just Just that is, it's a time thing. Why this is another reason for why it's really not realistic for everyone. Um, Are there teachers that go in on weekends and stay late in the evening? Absolutely. There are people doing that. And that's, that's, but that's their passion. And I'm not saying if this is your, if this is your passion, like go, you do you. 100%. But if you have, if you are needing to focus on other areas to professionally develop, then you should not get distracted by transforming your classroom. (laughs) Do it later is what I'm saying. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so this will be happening on your free time. And it is really not, it's not your job to fully furnish a classroom really to this extreme. That is not your job. Your job is to be an educator and ensure the kids have a proper, deep understanding of what they are going to need. But also, we are supposed to teach social emotionally um, and so many other things that it, it is a lot already. Um, this, if you get to this point, that is a bonus, to be clear. It's a bonus. Um, third, um, you are most likely going to be paying for this transformation out of your pocket. The truth is, is that teachers pay for a lot of their own, out of, out of their own way for the supplies, right? You're paying for your supplies um, a lot of the times. You, doesn't, the budget never is enough. It's not, it's not. Um, or there is absolutely no money for your classroom. Sometimes that is, that, is ha- that is something that happens. Or maybe you only get whatever the um, parent advisory committee is able to get you. And depending on where or what kind of school you work at, it may be a lot and it may be very little. And again, there are tons of reasons for why this is not this should not be for everybody's focus. Um, and now there is a social media pressure to have a designer classroom. Again, you're paying out of your pocket and are trading time for dollars. So you're most likely not getting funded for this. I say most likely because I don't know everybody's circumstance, right? Um, I am just going on where, uh, based off of what my experience was um, and where I live, which is very different. Of course, again, everybody's circumstance is different. So that is some, a reason also what what we have to consider so why why not to compare yourself your situation is not going to be everyone else's situation and it's not going to be the person on instagram's situation you cannot what i'm saying is do not compare yourself to others (laughs) do not do it (laughs) um and do not compare yourself to social media i guarantee if you ask those people to say okay what does your classroom look like after you come back (laughs) from being away for a day and you had a sub <laughs> that is <laughs> when you see a, re- a classroom sometimes you come back and you're like whoa this is amazing and unexpectedly perfect <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> you never know <laughs> you never know um and again that could happen for uh, many reasons also we don't know um and we cannot make assumptions either so um you are Most likely, um, again, not getting funded for this. You have bills, your own bills to pay. You might also have financial goals that you want to achieve. Maybe you're saving for retirement. Maybe you're saving for having actual savings. Um, So you might maybe need to focus on that. 
Um, maybe it's not necessarily a professional development thing, but maybe that is something that you need to focus on, right? Again, all of our situations are different. Um, or there are student debts to pay off, right? Uh, is a completely designer classroom absolutely necessary for you? If it is, go for it. Like I said, you can spend your money however you want. But a designer classroom will not make you a better teacher. Having a designer picture perfect classroom is different from having an organized one with some decor up, okay? So I wanna make that very clear. I am not saying do absolutely nothing. Um, that is very institutionalized. <laughs> However, that is how classrooms come, right? That nobody's funding this. Um, government funded classrooms are absolutely bare. You get your tables and you get your chairs and hopefully they match. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I started, I had my classroom was used as a storage room and I inherited that as my classroom furniture with chalkboards and and a rear projector. Like not a digital projector, like one where I was the only person going and photocopying the transparencies, which at, uh, even though that was over a decade ago, that was still crazy because, it's, I mean, the last time I had seen that was in 2007 in high school. At the latest, I don't actually, I don't think anybody had digital projectors, but, well, where I went to school anyways, I had never seen them. But when I became a teacher, I was like, whoa, look at these. Actually, when I was in university, I, said, I guess I saw them, but not, they weren't something in high school. I'm getting very distracted anyways. So that is what I started off with. And, um, but that's what government funded classrooms look like. <laughs> and, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not per picture perfect. Um, and by the way, it never, it, when I left, um, teaching, uh, over 10 years later, um, I did, I, I did have a digital projector, um, and I did get whiteboards. So that was an improvement. Just took a while. <laughs> Okay, anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so what I'm saying is having a designer picture perfect classroom is very different from having an organized one with some decor up. I am talking the extreme cases that are showing up on social media, they're beautiful, they have filters, um, they have editing, right, it is beautiful, the pictures are gorgeous, I, um, I admire them 100%, uh, but I'm just saying that they are they can cause anxiety and a social pressure to also want to do the same, right? But what is actually going to make you a better teacher? Now, the list of what will make you a better teacher is huge, okay? And I'm only going to give you 10 things that I just could think of off the top of my head, right? And then I was writing this, um, and I thought these 10 things would make you a better teacher over your classroom decor. Um, if that is the focus, right? Because that is what I'm talking about. I'm focusing on things that are going to make you a better teacher. The classroom decor does not add to your ability to be a teacher, to teach a good lesson, to engage and build re build relationships with your students, um, to earn their trust. Uh, none of that, right? That is not part of the job. It's two different things. Um, okay, so one, having a plan makes you a better teacher. So planning your year, being organized and prepping in batches if you wanna be extremely productive, which is what I would do. Um, I would prep and photocopy for weeks at a time. So that way I would always show up for the students and be the teacher that they needed me to be that day, right? Um, it doesn't matter what we're feeling, when we show up, I'm not saying appearing, right? When I'm saying show up, I mean that we are present to be your teacher and we're there to support you show up. Um, I was there to be the teacher that they needed to be. Um, so when you're planning last minute every day or you're frazzled at the photocopier, like the bell rings, you're waiting for your 30 pages to come out, you're always behind, you're always rushing, and you're flustered. Instead, use your decorating time uh, for actually doing the work, right? We're focusing on the goal, which is be improving um, our ability to be good teachers there is a distraction happening of focusing on our classroom decor and spending time on that as well. Now, if you are done everything and you have that time to do it, go for it, make those improvements. But again, that happens over time, over years. It doesn't happen overnight. 
Um, but spend time, again, actually doing the work, creating your lesson plans, organizing your year and your resources, etc. I would have bins for days of the week and then in each one for Monday, there would be like this, um, this week, then a folder behind it next week, then the week after that. And I would just shift my, I would plan for the three, three weeks at a time and I would just shift the resources in the folders forward. So that way when I would leave the, on Saturday, or no, I wouldn't leave work on Saturday. Oh my gosh. I leave work on Sunday. <laughs> what? Friday. Sorry guys. I live in an alternate universe now where I work at home and the days of the week, <laughs> my work days are like 12 hours long and I don't even know what's happening. And my week, my weekends and weekdays all like shift around all the time. Okay, so you, I you leave, I used to leave on a Friday, a Friday, um, and I that would just I would just walk out because I was prepped for I still had another two weeks in my bins. So and I had already moved them forward, so I was ready to go. My whole day plan and my my books. My binder was all done with my day plans for all the different days and all the different lessons all were done all the time. I would also batch those for those three or four weeks that I would prep for. And I would just flip the day on to Monday when I left on Friday and I was done. That's how I would roll and I was always good. And I got really good at that, especially because their COVID showed up and I, you know, like, if you have to quarantine, um, you had to be prepped. So I really got good at doing that. Um, but anyways, next thing is to focus on creating amazing resources. So rich lessons that go deep. They start off with a hook. They use total participation techniques. They uh, teach through a variety of strategies to engage all your different learners. Um, they have hooks, time for think pair shares, integrate technology or other share out methods. Maybe you do sketch noting in there, um, um, some play based learning, have solid hooks. Did I say solid hooks? It's important. Um, and beautiful show what you know so that way the kids walk away with new knowledge that they actually enjoyed learning about. Okay, number three, the third thing that you could do to be a, a better teacher would be to focus on building relationships and earning trust. And I, I'm going to repeat that. You need to earn the trust. You can't show up in the classroom and expect the kids to all trust you. Not every student will want to trust their teacher for a range of reasons. We don't know their world. Okay, so you might have to work on this a lot with some of your learners over the years. Um, or maybe you have one of those classroom years and you will have a lot of them <laughs> where you have to earn their trust. <laughs> a lot. Um, it might even take months of daily sit downs with one to one sessions with a particular individual. Um, but this is so important for the child to feel safe, want to learn, um, and for your overall classroom management. Will it solve all the problems? Nope, but it is extraordinarily helpful and so important for being a teacher. <laughs> Number four, spend time on creating amazing hooks for your lesson. Capture and captivate your students' attention and make them eager and want to learn, okay? Make amazing hooks. Number five, Build movement into your lesson, okay? There are all kinds of reasons that kids need movement. Some really can't sit long. Some learn better standing up. Some are kinesthetic learners. So try and add movement into your lessons. Number six, develop amazing unit plans. Don't just go along the surface and hit content briefly. Instead, find topics that you will go deep on. Your students will learn so much more and will retain it much longer, hopefully forever. Okay, number seven is stop rushing. Stop rushing. Slow down. Slow down on everything. Have your kids slow down. We all need to slow down and be a little bit more mindful. Actually, Adding some mindful lessons to your classroom is a great idea. I have a blog post on that. So if you search up mindful art lessons on misartastic.com, I have a beautiful mindful drawing script that you can find right on that blog post. 
Number eight is to add in social emotional learning. Teach the whole students. So work on ways to help them learn and to help with both social and emotional pieces. Number nine is to attend the professional development sessions that you're actually passionate about. Honestly, when you go to a professional or pro D session that like captivates you, um, oh my goodness, the energy that you feel coming from that. It's insane, okay? Um, it is so energizing to go to a good pro D where you feel connection and it, you, when you feel like it speaks to you, right? Um, the ones that make you energized to take action that night. I love them. But sometimes you can't find them at your school. So search them out or attend um, more or go to like the really big ones where like um, – they're bringing in huge speakers. Those people, that is their world at that point is they are just focusing on providing professional development sessions for educators to help them be focus on being a better teacher like what we're talking about right now. Find those pro -Ds, go to them. Honestly, it's gonna change your world. You're not gonna be able to do everything that they say, but even if you apply or slowly over time integrate what they're saying into your teaching practice, you will be a better teacher. <laughs> okay, read. You probably already do this, but maybe you don't. Sometimes we get really tired after, you know, work. Um, but there are some amazing books out there. Look for, there's, they're always coming out. Find some amazing new ones. Maybe you're looking at Adrian Gear and her reading powers or her writing powers, um, whatever. Find some new ones. That will help you become a better teacher. If you're, if you think that you're struggling with something, we all have an area we need to improve on, right? There's none of us are perfect. We all have something to work on. So if, you, but if you are especially looking for something to work work on, uh, definitely grab some new reading material and power through them. Focus on it. Get it done. Don't just buy it and then just like throw it on your shelf. No power through it and create action items for yourself and then actually do the work. That will make you a better teacher. Is this all there is? No, like I said, there is. this is only 10 things. Um, there is a world of endless things that will help you improve on your teaching skills, including doing it for years, experience, I'm sure that each of you can add 10 things to this list. All I am saying is that you should never feel that not having a picture perfect classroom makes you a bad teacher or that if you have something that you really should be working on, do not get distracted by focusing on making an Insta worthy class, um, classroom. If you haven't focused, if your classroom management or if your marking is out of uh, whack or maybe you haven't even finished unit planning like then you need to reevaluate where your focus is right like that is a bonus and you don't need to feel that social pressure to make it perfect it doesn't have to be perfect we're always looking for progress progress over perfection please and thank you 10 percent every day uh creates a lifetime of improvements. So having an Insta-worthy classroom doesn't add to your teaching quality. This is just a reminder to not let social media add, so, add to social pressure and anxiety that I'm sure we all already feel on social media and take away from what truly matters. This is Ms. Artastic signing out. Oh, wait, before I do, um, if you are looking to read this or you want to revisit this, if you are listening to me on the podcast right now or if you are watching me on my blog or vlog on YouTube, you can find this blog post at MsArtastic.com or on the podcast if you are listening right now. Um, in the podcast description on your podcast player, there is a link in there. If you click it, it says blog post show notes. Click the link. It will take you to my blog and this post um, so you can revisit it at any time. If you are watching me currently on YouTube, hello, you can see me. <laughs> and my lovely friend, um, if you go into the YouTube description, um, you will find the blog post show notes there. Yes, 
click the link it's the first link and that will take you to my blog mizartastic.com which is my art hub of art education information if you're looking for um, some art lesson ideas dude I have them coming out all the time as well as these great in-depth articles so check it out make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or follow my podcast or if you're reading my blog right now and I'm on your the blog post talking um make sure you subscribe to the blog and I will see you next time now for real this is Ms. Artastic signing out Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to make amazing art lessons for you. Oh yeah. Well, if you are an art educator or a teacher and you're looking for some cool art lessons for your classroom, no matter what kind of teacher you are, for any grade, check out the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store. There I have over 700 art lessons and of course it's always growing and transforming. So make sure you check it out frequently. But it's the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store and you're gonna find art lessons that are fully planned and easy to use. And you're gonna find some cool art activities to use for all the seasons all the holidays, and so much more. You're gonna find amazing art lessons that are integrating the seasons, the holidays, elements of art, principles of design, and art history, and so much more, my friends. It's a fabulous resource, so check it out. If you're looking for some awesome art ideas for your classroom, you can head on over to teacherspayteachers.com. In that search bar, just click it, and you can type in Ms. Artastic, same as this YouTube channel. There I am, you can click that, and that's gonna bring you to this page. And you can navigate it a variety of ways. You can go down, scroll, and see what's new. Um, these are usually my featured products that are usually brand new. Or if you go down to the side here, you're gonna find the categories of different things. You can click Artivity Books to find my art um, activity books that are fully integrated with the elements and principles. You can find artists and art history, art sub resources, back to school, Christmas, distance learning, and so much more principles of design. Here it's all organized for different themes or the holidays and seasons or types of learning, including sketchbooks and social emotional learning and all of the above. So make sure you check it out, Ms. Artastic on Teachers Pay Teachers, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Ms. Artastic, signing out.